I only found out I was dis. I mean, I, I've I've ta I've tweeted about this um, uh, the last few years occasionally because occasionally it shows up and it, it highlights how I do do my own Twitter feed because my uh, spelling sometimes leaves something to be desired. Um, and it was a few years ago, actually, somebody uh, tweeted back quite abusively, and I said, "Well, look, you know, it's the crossed over between uh, spell check and dyslexia it doesn't always work." And they had a real go. I mean, I said, no, I, I am dyslexic, so I do understand. I didn't find out until I was much older, actually. I was uh, in my early 20s when somebody I know said, well, I was talking through some of the things. Actually, my wife was talking to somebody about um, some of the things I find, uh, I've always found a bit more difficult. And they said, you sounds like you're dyslexic, it's somebody in education. And I actually, out of curiosity, I was about 21 or 22, just went and got checked because I was just curious. And, it, and what they said to me was I was dyslexic. And they said if they'd have tested me when I was very young, I'd have probably been quite um, quite severe. But they said what they were saying to me was people who go through education, particularly who go further education, tend to find ways around it. And that's, I think, looking back, what I did in the way I work. And my son's um, dyslexic as well. And uh, he's, I mean, he's just started his first week at university. So um, he's, he, and he's had support to go through that. So, yes, I've seen it from both sides. So you didn't know until you were 21, but how did it, did it affect your education at school? Uh, yeah, I struggled at school. That I, I mean, I, spelling was always the thing I found most difficult. I've always really enjoyed reading, actually, but I, I was a slower reader. I learned to speed read as I got older. Um, and, I, and even with numbers, instead of remem remembering long sequences, I t I, what I do, and I think they teach people now, is I block. So I'll remember one, two, three, four, five, six in blocks like that. Uh, but rather like the point Matt made, actually, as, as you just read out, I've... I found what I, I it's given me I've ended up with actually a very good memory. I've got a sort of semi photographic memory I'll just go. I can remember things as images very clearly on like video. So um I've found that's my way around it. I've so I have a, a pretty good sort of semi photographic memory, which is very good when you're uh, trying to learn and remember things. But it's it affects different people I think sometimes in different ways. So my son actually it put him off reading. And what we found, and I've got a great credit to the now Lord um, Eric Pickles, who was superb. And Eric's a big fan of uh, wildlife and birds. He goes bird watching. And my mm. son was really, he got my son really interested in birds. And then got my son reading the books about birds of prey because he was so interested in them. And that got him reading and got him away through. And then obviously went on to read other things. And he had support with, with school and what have you. So, but it can really affect you, yes. And when I was younger, the schools weren't really aware of it. I don't, I don't from my memory, remember the schools talking about dyslexia and how they can help and support in any way at all. I think it's come much more um, in the last decade or so. And in terms of how it can be combated, um, the, it's a bit like mental health, isn't it? That It's only in recent years that people in the public eye, whether they're celebrities or indeed politicians, have started talking about depression and the, and the fact that, I mean, why shouldn't politicians suffer from depression just like anybody else? And this this kind of comes onto that category. Do you feel that I mean Matt obviously Matt Hancock obviously felt that he would be seen as weak or that have some sort of weakness if he talked about it. It's only now he's at the sort of pinnacle when you're in the cabinet that he's felt able to. What about politicians who are just sort of ordinary backbenchers? Would you encourage them to talk about it? Yeah, I think people, I think the more that those of us in public life do talk about these things, the better it is for anybody to realise they're not of their own. And mm. I think it's great Matt's talking about it. I mean, Matt is one of the cleverest people I've ever worked with. He's a fantastic guy um, and a huge asset to Parliament, full stop, forget parties for a moment. He's, he's, he's superb and therefore a great asset. I mean, look what you can achieve it's, it's not something to hold you back mm. um, and there's things people do like my son learned to uh, do they call it mind mapping so it becomes you learn very visually and some people with dyslexia and I'm like that as I say I remember things as images and you can and there's there's a huge range of things that um, people can learn now and work with the institutes and schools that that help people you, with dyslexia you, get, you, you've get held a number system. of senior ministerial positions in the home office <clears> and el elsewhere and you will have clearly had lots of long complicated documents to digest did you have to say to your civil servants well you, you need to sort of condense this or do it a little bit differently for me uh, no i don't think i really have actually no i i always enjoyed reading actually although i was a slower reader to start with i think because i enjoyed reading so much the more you do something you find i think your brain kind of finds a way to do it and particularly doing a law degree and with lip, you know have to learn cases and things like that you you get used to reading the detail. Maybe actually, you know, I end up reading the detail um, quite a lot. So I've always quite enjoyed reading, and I, I, so I found a way to to deal with that. But as I say, I've seen the other side of it. My son it put him off reading, mm -hmm. and we had to find something. And as I say, um, Eric, great credit to Eric for for triggering that for us. And he's uh, gone on, and as I say, now at university with fantastic A level results.